That was the views of the Labour leader. Let's talk now to the UKIP MEP, Gerard Batten, who joins me, as you see, from our studios at Westminster. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Joe. Your, your reaction to this High Court ruling? Right. First of all, I think it's an outrageous, politically motivated decision. Um, it's part of the establishment that doesn't actually want to leave the European Union. Secondly, I actually think that they're quite wrong in law, and the points that have been made by Nicola Sturgeon are incorrect. Every treaty that we've entered into since we joined the European Union has been signed and entered into by the government under the royal prerogative, which means that Parliament wasn't consulted. And I, don't, uh, I didn't notice any of these people complaining in the last 40 years when that happened. And now that the government wants to use the same mechanism to say that it's rescinding the treaty, uh, they suddenly find fault with that. And in, in fact, this is clearly established in, in legal judgments going back when people have challenged treaties. Uh, and in fact, I've got one in front of me now for 1990 uh, in the case of the House of Lords judgment on the case of Rayner versus Department of Trade and Industry, in which it clearly states that the government has the right to, um, uh, to uh, repudiate and leave treaties. Uh, so this has been clearly established over many years uh, and in fact what, the ruling of the court today says that this will inevitably affect domestic legislation. Courts only have the right to get involved in treaties when they do affect legislation and the key word here is inevitably affect because until it does they have no jurisdiction and all of the acts of parliament that have come about as a result of our joining and being part of the European Union will of course have to go before parliament for a vote anyway. The problem here is that Theresa May has vacillated, uh, vacillated, sorry, uh, and shilly-shallied over this. She should have written this letter to the European Council the day after she became leader of the Conservative Party uh, and kicked off Article 50, uh, and then uh, the courts wouldn't have been able to do anything about it anyway. I mean, this is the, the ruling of, of judges, though. I mean, this is, we have an independent judiciary in, in, this, in this country, and, and that is the rule of law. Well, I'm afraid that they are part of the establishment, and the fact that they have ruled this way proves it, in my view. This has to come before the Supreme Court, and they have to make the final decision, and I believe that's going to be on the 7th of December. Now, if they actually uphold this decision, then they are going to precipitate a constitutional crisis because they will be clearly out of step with the democratic will of the vast majority of people in this country, 17.4 million who voted to leave the European Union, and they will be seen to be trying to thwart that process. But does it thwart it? Doesn't it just slow it all down? Well, that's the, uh, that's the agenda. I, di I did write a, a little book on this subject uh, two years ago in which I explained the quick way for leaving the European Union, which was merely to repeal the European Communion, which was merely to repeal the European Communities Act and put it before Parliament uh, immediately. Um, and they, that is the strategy which I outlined there uh, two years ago, which the establishment will try to delay this whole process and delay it and then fudge it at the end so that we end up with some kind of deal, which means we don't really leave the European Union anyway and we'd be in a similar position to Switzerland uh, and uh, Norway, uh, where we still pay money, we still have open borders and we still have to obey a large amount of EU law. So I certainly don't trust Theresa May to start with in this whole process, uh, but I think that it should be left to Parliament and the courts would have been very wise to keep out of it. And according to judgments that have been made through the years, they don't have the right to uh, interfere with the making or unmaking of treaties anyway. Okay, well, if the Supreme Court uh, continues with this in December, what does UKIP do then? Well, what, it, what will your strategy be? Well, our strategy will, will, won't change. Our strategy is to bring, bring about this referendum, which we did, to win the referendum, which we did, and now it's to make sure that it's actually enforced. Now, what the, if there is a constitutional crisis, the outcome of that is unforeseeable, but there must be a general election uh, in order to resolve it. Now, um, the problem with this is it should happen immediately. Uh, if, if, if the Supreme Court upholds this and says, well, we're now going to delay this whole process, I would expect Theresa May to go to the country and hold a general election so that we can have a new House of Commons uh, fought on this very issue. But of course, the House of Commons, a majority of them may not want to have a general election because there has to be a 60% vote of no confidence in the government. And it's quite possible uh, that we wouldn't have a general election until 2020. And this whole thing would be allowed to delay and delay uh, for another uh, you know, four, four years. Um, and I think that that would uh, be go down very badly with the electors of this country who voted to leave the European Union. All right, Gerald Button, we will be discussing this again, I'm quite sure. Thank you very much for now, the UKIP MEP there. Thank you.